Hi everyone and welcome to the first video in this tutorial series on how to put a robot into your films using Blender. This is the first of five videos in this tutorial series and in this video we're going to be focusing on importing 3D models from the internet and then rigging them. So to start off with I went to free3d.com, that is super hard to say. This is a website that has lots and lots of 3D models that you can download, the majority of them are for free, you just have to click the free 3D models in the top right. I searched for a robot obviously and there's a couple of file formats we can use, there's Blender or OBJ. The advantage of a .blend file is that as soon as you open it all of your materials will work because it's actually been saved as a Blender file. However, OBJ files are universal within all 3D software so there's a lot more of those available. I settled on this model of Clank from Ratchet & Clank just because it's fairly minimalistic in terms of the body shape so there's nothing too complex. You just want to hit download and then it will save a .zip file into your downloads folder and then you need a software like 7-zip or WinRAR to open it. Save the file somewhere memorable and we're ready to go. One thing that I should probably point out now is that I have my right and left clicks reversed in Blender. By default right click selects things which is kind of weird because by default in pretty much every other software left click is to select. So if you go into your settings you can actually change which button selects things. I prefer having mine this way but if you don't want to do that that's fine just keep in mind that you'll have to do the reverse of whatever I say when it comes to clicking. So let's get started and bring in the 3D model. You want to go to file in the top left and then go to import and wavefront.obj. Obviously if you downloaded a blender file you want to choose .blend instead. So now the model is imported and it's absolutely massive, this kind of happens when you import models quite a lot. So just scale it down by pressing S and then dragging your mouse towards the centre of the screen. I've just enabled screencast keys down here in the bottom left so you can see what buttons I'm pressing and what mouse clicks I make. The first thing I did is press A which selects everything and then I press Ctrl J which merges all the objects in the scene into one big mesh. The reason for this is that everything actually came separate so all of the screws and things weren't attached to each other so you want everything to be one big object. We're going to start by adding an armature which will look like a very very simple human skeleton. So to do this press Shift A and then go down to the armature menu and select single bone. Drag this up to about where the hips are because this is going to be the centre of mass for our 3D model. Next come over to the right under the control panel, select the armature tab and then tick the box called X-Ray. This is going to allow us to see the bones even if they're actually inside the 3D model. Now press tab to go into edit mode and then select the top of the bone and drag the blue arrow up until it's about where the neck is. Next we want to make a couple of extra bones that are going to control the neck and the head. So to do this we want to select the top of the bone and then press E which stands for extrude and this will make an extra bone coming out the top of the last bone. Make the first one going to about where the chin of the character is and then make the second one go all the way up to the forehead. Next we're going to start on the arms and we're going to tell Blender exactly where the bone needs to go by selecting an origin point within the mesh. With the mesh selected press tab to go back into edit mode and then what we're going to do is actually hide parts of the mesh so that we can expose the shoulder joint and choose exactly where the bone is going to go. You can press L with your mouse hovering over part of the mesh and it will select all of the connected vertices to that point. So I'm going through and doing this and then pressing H to hide things until I can actually see the shoulder joint here. And then what I'm doing is holding down Alt and selecting an edge which selects the entire ring of vertices on this tube. Then if you press Shift S and choose cursor to select it that will snap Blender's 3D cursor to the centre of that ring. And what this now does is allow us to place the shoulder bone at the exact origin point where the shoulder connection begins on the model. So now press tab to leave edit mode of the robot and then select the armature and press tab to go into edit mode for the armature. Now using the origin point we can press shift A which adds a new bone to the armature. And now we can do the same process again to choose where the end of the bone is going to get snapped to. So now back in edit mode of the robot I can unhide the stuff that I hid earlier by pressing alt H and then what I can do is hover over the shoulder joint and press L which selects it. Then press shift S again and do cursor to selected which puts Blender's origin point at the center of that shoulder. Now we go back into edit mode for the armature, select the top of the bone and then do shift S selection to cursor which snaps the end of the bone to the shoulder. And now the shoulder bone perfectly corresponds to the dimensions of our mesh. And now we just have to rinse and repeat to do all the other parts of the arm. The legs are exactly the same process so just go into edit mode by pressing tab and then hold down alt and click to select an edge loop and then press shift S again and do cursor to selected. Then just do the same thing going down the leg. The foot is slightly different because on this robot the ankle is a lot further back than on a normal human being. So for this instead of just extruding a foot bone from the bottom of the leg I selected the shin bone and then pressed shift D to duplicate it. I then pressed R and rotated it about 90 degrees and then placed it at the centre of mass for the foot. The black dashed line is just a relationship line that shows it's still connected to the leg. So now we've done all the bones for one side of our robot, it doesn't make much sense to also have to manually place the bones for the other side. What we can do instead is mirror the bones to the other side. So with the armature selected, press tab to go into edit mode, and then press B and marquee select the arm and leg bones for the right hand side of the body. We don't want to select the spine, neck or head bones because they're already in the centre of our mesh, and if we mirror them we'll just end up with two in the same place. 
Now press Shift C, which snaps our 3D cursor back to the center of our scene, and this also lines up with the very center of our robot. With those bones still selected, press Shift D, which will duplicate them, and then they'll be attached to your cursor, so press Escape so that you don't click and place them anywhere else. You want them to be exactly where they were. Then click this little box down here and set it to 3D cursor. Now, anything that we scale or rotate in our scene will be centered around this 3D cursor. Now press S, X, and then minus one, which is essentially scaling our bones by minus one in the X axis. So now our arm and leg bones are perfectly mirrored onto the other side of our robot. The next thing we have to do is separate our mesh into corresponding pieces with the armature. So for example, we need a bone for the shoulder, for the forearm, for the bicep, for the neck, for the head, etc. With the robot selected, press tab to go into edit mode again, and I'm doing the technique I did earlier by hovering my mouse over certain areas and pressing L to select all the connected vertices. I'm doing the spine bone first, so I essentially want to select everything that's part of the robot's torso. This model has some really fine detail like bolts and screws, so I had to zoom right in and make sure I selected everything. I also made sure to deselect these shoulder joints because they're going to be controlled by our shoulder bones and not by the spine bone. With all that selected, hit P and then click selection, which turns everything we had selected into a separate object. Now if I press H to hide the new object, we can see we've actually missed a few pieces, so I select them, go back into edit mode, and then just select them by pressing L and then hitting P to separate them as well. Now press tab to go back into object mode, press alt H which unhides the torso, and then we can press Z and go into wireframe mode, and then if we hold shift and select the new bolts that we missed and then the torso, if we press ctrl J that can make them into one big object. So now the whole torso of our robot is just one big object separate to the rest of the mesh and later on we can attach it to the spine bone. So now what we need to do is go through and separate the rest of the mesh into individual objects as well. We need individual objects for the head, bicep, shoulder, arm, thigh, shin and feet. So I did that at super speed and now we can go through and as you can see I'm hiding all the individual objects and I have them all as separate meshes that I can control. One thing I actually missed earlier was we need to connect the legs and the arms to the spine bone because at the moment they're just floating. With the armature selected, press tab to go back into edit mode, hold shift and select the shoulder, then select the spine and then press ctrl P and then do keep offset. Then do the same for the other shoulder and the two legs and then we're good to go. The last step in this video is going to be connecting all the objects to the bones. So make sure you have the armature selected and then change the box that says object mode to pose mode. This step's a little bit hard to see, but what you want to do is select the object you want to connect to the bone first, so here the shoulder, and then holding shift, select the bone you want to connect it to, and then press Control P and select bone. And now that individual object is parented to the bone, so however you move it, the object is going to move as well. Make sure when you're doing this that you deselect everything each time so that you're not parenting more than one object to a bone. To do that, just press A and it will deselect everything, or if nothing's selected already, then it will select everything. If that happens, just tap A again and then continue parenting. Once all the bones are done, if you've done it correctly, you should be able to rotate the bones and the objects will move with them. Have a quick play just to make sure you haven't missed anything. Here you can see I missed the pelvis, so I had to do that later on. And that brings us to the end of the first video. I hope you guys found this useful and that it wasn't too hard to follow. If you got stuck, watch that part a couple more times and see if you can work it out. Or failing that, I reply to all of the comments on my channel within a couple of hours, so drop a comment and I will try and get back to you and help out. Make sure you come back tomorrow to check out the second video, which is going to be on texturing our robot.